We have Laura Griffin with us, and she's an expert at leveraging Facebook groups for lead gen in her real estate business. She's been in the business for over 15 years, creating over $20 million a year in real estate sales. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine, and here's what you can expect to learn in today's show. The nitty gritty details on exactly what to do if you want to set up a Facebook group and build your lead generation strategy through that group. In today's episode, we have Laura Griffin with us, and she's an expert at leveraging Facebook groups for lead gen in her real estate business. She's been in the business for over 15 years, and she's leveraged the power of her local mom Facebook group with 10,000 moms into her main lead gen source, creating over $20 million a year in real estate sales. And as a result of her Facebook group, Laura has been recognized as a top producer in the Northern Virginia Association of Realtors year after year. And now she teaches other agents how to use the power of Facebook and Facebook groups as a free lead gen tool in their business. So reach out to her. She is Laura Griffin Coaching on Instagram. And she you can find her also on groups to leads.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Laura Griffin. Laura, why Facebook groups? Hi, Shelby. So for me, Facebook group was a natural way to get clients. It just kind of happened naturally. It was more organic because I am not a, I don't enjoy online leads. Don't tell anyone. You can tell us. We don't need (laughs) So it was not my thing. I don't, I will not door knock. You, you will have to pay me a million dollars if you want me to go door knock. It's not my jam. And I hated doing open houses because I have two kids and we have soccer and we have cheer or we have cooking classes or whatever on the weekends. And I don't want to give up my weekend. So Facebook groups was a natural fit for me as a mom. And it just felt more natural for me and how I like to sell. How long did it take you to, you know, from the, from the start of the Facebook group to the point where it started generating you leads? How long did it take you? So when I first started my Facebook group, I was like, I just want a Facebook group. Don't we all, you know, I'm just not friends. And I wasn't really thinking of it as a business. I'm like, oh, look, I've got thousands of friends. Yay. And then I realized it was going to be a lead gen and it was a business. It didn't start that way. And I really had to buckle down and go, okay, wait, I've got thousands of people that know me, like me and trust me. I've got thousands of emails, but I'm not using them in my real estate business to get leads. Like I, why am I like, I'm an idiot. Like, why am I doing this? Like, it's great to have a group and anyone can grow it, but you've got to get the leads, right? Cause you're going to spend time, your money, all the things. So it's, I it was probably year three-ish. I'd gone to a conference in Sacramento, California, where I'm from. And there was a lady there who was selling, I don't remember what it was. It was something. And she, it, was some, it was like an MLM and I, I can't remember what it was, but she was like, yeah, I get like, I make $20,000 a month selling whatever it was from my Facebook group. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, tell me all your secrets. And so I cornered, <laughs> sounds crazy, but I was like, I'm going to corner you. So I cornered her one day at lunch. I was like, tell me everything. And she really was like, I don't stand up in my group and go, I sell whatever. Like you have to be natural about it and figure out who will buy your products. And she was really intentional about what she was posting in her group and how she was doing it. And like a light bulb went off. I'm like, why can't I do this? I can take what she's doing, apply it to a totally different industry, but it'll still have the same effect. And her and I talked and she's like, yeah, I mean, moms like to sell and buy, or like moms like to buy from other moms. So she's like, you really need to lean into that. Stop being like, oh, I'm a mom and I'm a realtor. But I never really wanted to acknowledge that I was a mom to my clients and really like lean into that. And so she's like, no, they will trust you. And she was right. I think that was probably the best conference I've ever gone to. Okay. I'm sold on the idea of Facebook groups and I want to get started. Maybe I'm not a mom hypothetically. So like what type of group would you recommend I start so we can go like step one through the process of how to do it? Okay. So you need to, so I coach clients on starting growing Facebook groups. And sometimes clients will come to me and say, I already have this group. It's not doing what I want. And we kind of deep dive into it. And I will say, you need to kind of figure out a broad group that will serve your community. 
do not niche, niche, niche down to like a running group for like, you know, like Sacramento, California, like that's not going to generate the leads that you want or something where it's, you know, something like that. So you want to pick like a community group, a parents group, a mom's group, something like that, where you can add pieces about your community, share content about different restaurants and places to go, but also have be able to have those real estate type conversations. And if you have a running group, you cannot have real estate conversations, right? Maybe you know where the best running trails are, but you're not really going to be promoting the top 10 pizza places in your city. Or, you know, if you want to do a market update, what's the market up? Like keep the running group's not going to care. So it needs to be a community group for your area. But I caution too, you need to do research. I had someone else come to me and they're in Florida and there was already 10 groups of the same name they wanted to use. So research it first, just to make sure there's not already 10 people that have your same idea <laughs> because you don't want to be one of 10 groups. It's not going to work. So think of a name. It could be, you know, your city community group, your city parents group, mom's group, living in, yada, yada, what, you know, letter city, what's going on in the city. Use chat GPT it can help you finesse some titles, but yeah, you definitely want to have the name of your city. I have my county because it's a little bit, it's not that big, but like a county, your city name, town name, something like that. That is so interesting that you say to be a little bit more broad, being that like going on other social media accounts, typically you need to, the the advice for presenting yourself in front of an audience, it's like, you need to be very, very niche. So like, but that makes sense because with a Facebook group, you're trying to have more conversations and differing opinions and just like, you know, just a, that community feel like, like you said, <laughs> I have an embarrassing story. I started a Facebook group <laughs> and I wanted so the purpose. This is going to be a tutoring session, Laura, by the way, I started a Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying my couch and let's have a therapy session. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. The purpose of my group was to help specifically, and I think this is where I mess up, I was too specific, was for agents that are spouses of military members. Because those agents, they're moving every two to three years, you know, maybe, maybe six, but they're they're moving and they have to pick up and start their whole business over again. So I wanted like an easier way to send referrals between agents that are specifically spouses of moving military members. It's like a whole nother, you know, game that people, other agents don't ever have to deal with moving. So I have a whopping two people in my Facebook group. And Allie, <laughs> really? Holy space. I haven't done anything with it. So, okay. So I'm friends with you now. We're <laughs> <laughs> And like, okay, so I have so many questions. Step one, I should have been more broad. What is once, so once I have developed it, I've used um, chat PPT. Oh, go ahead. Well, wait, so you're going to, you're not getting real estate leads. Like, like someone in this area wants you to help them buy or sell. You want to get leads from people referring you business or like other real estate agents referring you business. Is that what the goal of your group was? And referring out, like I'm specific, I'm a little bit more of like an outbound referral agent. So just like a referral group within the network of, you know, agents that are married to militaries, military members. Is that too niche? Okay. Okay. If you're, it, why not be? So I'm a military spouse and I'm a real estate agent. My husband's medically retired now, so I, I'm not moving. Thank God. I mean, maybe not, I'm not going to win, but I understand the PCS lifestyle and I get that, that and moving around. So you, the problem could be one of two things. I would see what your description is because is it like attracting me? Like, is this what, what's this group about? Do I want to join this? Does this sound exciting? And I would, you know, you probably, there is a niche for that. And I think there could be a need for that. You're just going to have to lean into the military spouse and, and knowing that spouses could be men or women. So making sure it's not geared towards one demographic versus another. Because I have friends that they're military spouses and they're men. So I would check your description. First of all, what is your Facebook cover or the banner of the group rather looks like. And then you're going to have to think of a growth strategy of like a lead magnet or landing pages to grow it or invite all your friends and just be really clear the intention of the group. And you're going to need to lean into content that deals with how do you refer out business when you're, when you're, you know, when you're moving or, or best practices around, you know, attracting veteran clients and, because obviously those people are probably going to attract a veteran set of buyers or sellers. 
So, you know, you're probably going to need to market to making sure that you have agents that know what they're doing. Cause I don't want to refer it to somebody else, you know, in another state that might be a military spouse, but just isn't as up to date on, you know, just maybe it doesn't have all the knowledge or newer or something like that. Okay. Okay, cool. So chat GPT to help you with the title, you create it, you make sure that the banner is something that's inviting to all not not gender specific, a description that is very well, exciting. <laughs> Once you have that, so, or, and the okay, the banner, the title, the description, and you invite people, how, what, what's step two, as far as growing the page? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. So for growing your group, the biggest thing is invite. So if the group is geared toward having real estate agents and you need to invite all your real estate agent friends, and even if they don't fit your demographic and maybe they don't live in a military town, then you'd want to invite other agents that would know those people. It wouldn't matter. But if you were doing a community group to get real estate clients that want to buy or sell with you, start with your low hanging fruit, past clients, friends, family, if they're local. <laughs> I like, I don't want to invite Aunt Carol who lives in Nebraska because that's not going to do me any good, but invite those people and they will start and, and, and encourage them to invite others. Like we really want this group to be successful, need your help. Can you help invite your friends? And you'd be surprised if like one person, if 10 people invite 10 other friends, it's a hundred people in your group. That's pretty easy. I think everyone knows 10 people. And so you can see how you can just do the compounding effect. Once you hit 500, Facebook thinks you're a legitimate group. And so they'll just start re- inviting people for you. You can run ads from a landing page in, in your Facebook ads. If your page is the owner of your group or can be an ad, owner admin, um, you can run ads from your Facebook page to your group. Of land, they have landing pages now for that. And also a lot of people, I run contests. I used to run contests more, like invite your friends. Whoever invites the most people gets injured to win a you know $50 Amazon gift card or $25, whatever your budget is. And you'd be surprised how many people will help you grow your group because they want that $50 Amazon gift card. It costs you 50 bucks, but maybe you got, you know, a couple hundred people out of your group quickly. So they go, okay. So hypothetically, you have people now that have found your page, but they, they see it. And I've done this so many times, which is why I'm asking. I see the page and I have this moment of like, do I really want to join another group of probably just you know, bullshit, probably. So what is it when I'm at your page? Why am I joining yours? Like, what is there anything like, or how do you set it up to make it so that people want to be a part of it? So they want to join your group, it's really going to come down to the banner. Does it like, I don't know how many times I'll look at groups, and it's just the generic Facebook banner with like multiple people. It just looks, you know, it's we all know that look, right? So your banner needs to be like, it has to kind of look, I don't know, look appealing to you. So if you were appealing to women or men or or anybody, then it needs to have that. And also don't put, you know, Laura Griffin, real estate agent, Pearson Smith, reality, like no one wants all your real estate gobbledygook on it. Keep it off. The group is its own thing. It's its own brand. It's its own entity that your real estate page will own the group or at and an admin. And so there'll be a little box at the bottom and it's a different color, depending on what colors you put through your, but it'll say, you know, like mine is the Loudon Moms and it says group by Laura Griffin, real estate agent, Pearson Smith Realty. So you do have some real estate branding, but it's not the forefront of it. So often I'll see whatever real estate company and that's all it is. I also like to put a picture of me. So mine's a mom's group. If you did something mom or parent, I would definitely put you and your kids. That's what I, if you don't mind using your children, I do have my kids and it's helped me get sales because people recognize my son sometimes more often than Laura does. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever, you sold me a house, buddy. Or use your face because sometimes people will stop me in Target and they'll be like, you're that lady in that group, right? And I'm like, is this going Is this going to go good or is this going to go bad? How are we doing this? <laughs> like, are you going to yell at me? And it always ends up well. I mean, I've never had anybody yell at me, but so you want to do that. Your description too needs to be welcome to, you know, Shelby, what city do you live in? Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Welcome to our Lexington, Kentucky community group. We're, you know, and you want to put that in your first part of your show. Welcome to this group. We serve the residents of Lexington, Kentucky. You want to put that in there because Facebook is using that piece as a search engine. So it's taking parts of your description. The next part is going to be about our group is about yada, yada. What is it? It needs to be compelling. I don't want you to put, it's a group by Laura Griffin, real estate agent. Because Whoa, wait, now you're going to sell to me, aren't you? Like people know that and they're going to, 
white, you're going to swipe, like, don't want to be part of this group. So it needs to be compelling. Like we serve, you know, the residents of Lexington, or yeah, Lexington, you know, we're here about supporting the community. We will post about the latest restaurants, newest things happening in the community, you know, whatever you're going to put. And you can chat GTP it as much as you want. If it's a mom's group, you know, it's a safe place for moms have, you know, to bond with each other. Have, you'll have community events, networking, whatever it is your group's going to have. That's the meat of it. So it's a little bit about welcome to our group. We serve this area. What's the group about? The next part is a call to action. So almost all of us will get relocation clients to our Facebook group if it's set up appropriately with the right name of the group with the location and the locations in your description. If you're moving to Lexington, Kentucky, you want to grab a copy of my relocation guide, click here. And she's going to have a link to a landing page that's going to link to her email service provider and it's going to shoot that relocation guide over to you. If you don't have a relocation guide, Go to Fiverr, Fiverr, Upwork, Etsy, talk to your broker. Someone will have one. doesn't have to be fancy. You just want to get their information. So you have like a call to action. And then at the bottom, depending on your state, I would definitely have about you, a little bit about you and that you're a real estate agent and whatever state disclosures you're required to have. Like we're supposed to have one click away and, and all those things. So just make sure you have those on there. Okay, got it. So at that point, do I can, can I see that call to action before I actually join? Like, is it a private group? And like, okay, I've decided to join. Okay. And I click join. What happens? So whenever a group is, I always recommend doing private because people feel more, feel safer posting that. When you find a group that you want to join or it recommends you, you will just see the banner, a little bit of analytics in the group. So you can tell if the group's dead and like no one's been posting for the last six years, <laughs> you know, whatever is going on. And then you'll see the description. <clears throat> Once you say, yep, I want to join, three questions will pop up if it's set up correctly. And then once you join the group, if they have a certain setting set, you'll get like a carousel. You know, like on Instagram, you see those carousels. There'll be a carousel of like a letter, like a thank you, welcome letter. And then the group rules will come, will be the next page if they've set it up correctly and done their settings right, usually. Okay. When, when people join Facebook groups, what, you know, there, there are always those questions. Like you, like you said, you said three questions. What questions do you have? What questions w- would you recommend that other agents have in their uh, Facebook group? Cause I know that a lot of, a lot of times when agents, Facebook groups are money, like, as you know, <laughs> um, Facebook groups are money. So a lot of agents will try to join other people's groups, but the, there's questions on there saying, Hey, are you a real estate agent? Uh-huh. And if they check, yes, they're not going to be allowed in. Do you have that as a question? What other questions do you have? Yes. So actually I'll pull mine up right now because I'll just read it off to you because I can't remember the exact in my head. So the first one is what city do you live in? I like to know because all those AI services are getting really creative and they can, they are now filling in these questions for people. So I put what city do you live in? Because sometimes what it'll do is it'll take the cities that you have listed as your group serves. It'll just cut and paste it in there. So I always know if it's like the first city and they put comma VA in there, like no one puts that, right? Like people just put like, I live in Aldi, Virginia. Like people aren't going to put Aldi, Virginia. They're just going to put Aldi, right? Like they don't put comma VA. No one does that. So that's a way to to know if it's a scammer for the AI system. The next one is a, a lead capture question. So I want their email address because I want to market to them. The whole purpose of your Facebook group, and I can't... It, like your Facebook group is your CRM. It's your funnel. You want to get thousands of people in it, in your group, and then be able to extract leads from the bottom. So you need their email address. Like it's great to have a group. It's great to grow it. But if you can't get email addresses, physical addresses to these people and start marketing to them, don't waste your time. Like so often I see these groups and it's like, you, like these are just basics. So the question number two is what's your email address so we can send you exclusive offers discounts and our newsletter for our blank moms group to keep you updated on the most current happenings in our area. So you give me your email and I promise to you, I will send you offers and discounts from our area as well as a, a monthly newsletter. We now do it weekly, but I'm, you're giving me and I'm giving you something back and people will fill it in because they don't feel threatened. They're like, Oh, it's a mom's group. She has an email and there's a newsletter coming. Great. Perfect. The next part I put is, are you moving to Loudoun County? We are your local real estate experts. We would love to be the realtor of choice. Maybe help you with your move now or in the future. You can call me at yada yada. That's my phone number. And so often people put, yeah, I'm relocating from XYZ. Please email me or please call me. Or they'll just call me off of that, off my phone number being in that question. So again, I'm getting a lot of, excuse me, relocation clients. 
Okay. So at this point, you, they, you've collected their information. What happens behind the scenes? I know you're adding them to the newsletter, to your drip, whatever about the offers and the discounts. Is there any other actions that you're doing right away behind the scenes? When they first join? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm using a Chrome extension, which collects their questions and their metadata, dumps them in a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet talks to the email service provider. And then they get shot out an email that just says, welcome to our community. It's very sweet. It's very, you know, welcome to my community. It's all about yada, yada. Here's a copy of our rules. And there's a welcome video that I've inlaid. And it's just me talking about why I started the group, a little bit about myself. I also referenced, I'm a real estate agent, but it's kind of towards the end. So it's not for of me. Yeah. I'm glad you joined my group. I'm going to sell you a house. Thank you. <laughs> I've got your email now. I send them an email. If they're relocating, they get the welcome email. And then they'll get the relocation guide drip. So they'll get the relocation guide. They'll get some relocation drip systems put in there because they're, I find that most people are joining either they're scrambling and they have like a month to get here or they're about six months out. So I have a, a, um, a 12 month drip because I figure I'm going to capture them somewhere in that six month range. The Chrome extension. Can you dive deeper about what, what it is, how it collects the information and how you're able to connect the two? Yeah. So there's, there's three or four now on the market. I've tried three of them. There's like group, there is, they all have a subscription to them. So depending on how much there's group leads and then there's group kit. <clears throat> so you can go to your, you have to use Chrome. You have to go to, to, you know, your Chrome store and you have to buy the extension. They all have different prices depending on how much data you want. Another way of doing it is you can run an ad to people joining your group and then they will, in order to join, they'll get a password. So they have to give you their name and their email. And then you email that your email service provider will then kick out a password to them. Like they were signing up for like say a course or something. It'll kick back a password. Say it's ice cream. They just put ice cream into like the question number one, like what was the password? And then you can jo have them join. And then they're already in your email service provider because they've already been to your landing page. And then the email service provider is already kicked out the password. <laughs> so you could do it that way. Some people don't like the Chrome extensions. They will break occasionally. So you have to kind of just be making sure it's still like working because Facebook, you know, it, it doesn't like external things. <laughs> so I, I might be late to the Chrome extension game, but I, over this past weekend, just what went there to where the extensions are all located and just went through like 2023 favorites and like, you know, recommended for me. And I am fucking obsessed with my little Chrome extensions that I set up. And I'm like hyper efficient on all these things that I already thought I was efficient on. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> very cool that you said that. I, it's what? There's tons. I didn't realize oh my, God, my business so many. She was like, your grammar is a little weird on this thing. And I was like, oh, she, and there was some grammar extent. I forget what it's called. Hemingway, I think it is. And I was like, oh, wow, this is bad. Like, it tells you what grade you wrote at. And, and she's like, I know when you use chat GPT, because it's like a level 12. She's like, people write at a level seven, like seventh grade lore. You need to tone it down. You tell chat GPT to tone it down. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I seriously love it. And actually, at one point, you know, Ali, you and I, or maybe we'll have you back, Laura, like, I want to go through all of the Chrome extensions now that I'm like using every day, because I'm pretty sure unless I paid for them without knowing, I'm pretty sure all the ones that I have are free, because there are like a bunch of free ones. But anyway, to bring it back. So Laura, you mentioned that when people join, they're set on a 12 month trip. And questions in that, what CRM did you create that campaign yourself? If not, did you hire which company to do it? Everything on that, if you would. Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. So I sent out a weekly email newsletter. I, I had like a true newsletter and then now I've kind of did like a hybrid of it because it's got a, a certain flow of emails. You, I, My CRM is Boomtown. It does not like fancy things. It's very just ugly. Like the stuff it sends, no offense to the Boomtown folks, don't like it, it's ugly. So I use an email service provider. You can use like a active campaign, a convert kit, MailChimp, Flowdesk, whatever your preference is. Because I want the nice newsletter. I want the prettiness of it. I just like it. And so 
I had a copywriter write all my emails for me. That is not my, my jam. And I will say, I think it was, it's about 1500 for every three months of emails. So she wrote 52 weeks of emails. There are some nuances that I change out every week. So I still have to do that. And I just have rinsed and repeated. No one's caught on yet that we're only, and this will be the second, second or third time they've seen some of these. So it's okay. Like no one's going to know. That's so why I change out some of the nuances and they are just a little bit of a mix. So there's like training or like tip emails. There is some community-based emails. There's permission emails, which are like, if you're, if you're a mom, you'll, you'll understand like Memorial or not Memorial Labor Day. Usually the kids are back in school. Right. And you know, when we think of moms, we think of labor, but like, it's okay to be excited that your children are back to school and you have some freedom in your life. Like I give you permission to be like excited when everyone's like, Oh, the kids are back. To-. Like, no, I'm like, throw them on the bus, get rid of them, please take them. I'll take anything just to get my kids, but it's okay to feel that way. So you're talking about like a permission email like that. And then there's a mix of some clout emails in there because I mean, I've been loud in 40 under 40. I've won awards. And so I do put that in there. Plus it kind of says I'm a real estate agent without saying I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> so, so it's kind of a mix of that nurturing um, system. And then for the relocation ones, our CRM had some relocation emails in there. And so I took a few of their nuance, like some of their emails and just kind of changed them and, and made them more about, obviously mine's a mom's group. So I talked about things they want to know about schools. What neighborhoods? I link to some YouTube videos that are about different neighborhoods. Where are their parks? Commuting routes? Just, you know, those kind of things that people, when they're relocating, they want to know. And then I have some funny ones. They're like the top five, top 10 pizza places. I think I have the top five ice cream places just because, hey, who doesn't like pizza and ice cream? I mean, if you didn't, then I'm not your friend. <laughs> yeah, you know, I put those fun ones in there. I'm curious as to who you hired, if you recommend them. And then going a little bit more toward the, like the content the, the questions that people ask in these groups, do, do you, are you finding other people answer them? Do you feel like you have to answer them yourself, especially when you're first starting out? Right. But yeah, first, who, who did you hire? I was in a business entrepreneur group and someone mentioned they were a copywriter and it was like, could you write just, I had her just write two emails. Right? Can you just write these? This is what I want. And she did it. I was like, okay, these work. You could use a chat GPT. In my coaching program, I give everyone 12 weeks of my emails that I paid for. And then I'm like, there's a way that you can take these emails and finesse them and take them into chat GPT and make 52 weeks out of them, teach how to do that. You could go to Upwork or Fiverr. There's some really cool copywriters in there. You're just going to have to do a test drive of a few people to find who has your, can kind of speak in your language, you know, can kind of get the nuances of how you speak and kind of really can can be you. And as far as content plans, yes. So at the beginning, you have to train your group on what you want, because if you don't, some people will take over your group. If your group is not about selling used things like a, you know, like a sales page, then you will get those spammy people in there and then they'll be posting their, you know, vent cleaning, their car cleaning and their used junk. So you have to teach your people what you want in your group. So you can do, you know, like, Drop a gift on how your morning went. So things like that, they get a lot of engagement. No fancy picture, no branded photos. <clears throat> Facebook really likes the, the posts in your group where they're like a color on the background. They're just a few sentences. It loves those. So if you can use that, the, the more often, the better. And so you're training people with the types of like, where are you? And I even will ask questions like for sure. Hey, where's a new nail salon? Like, I know where I went to get my nails done, but they want to help me. People want to help people. So I would post, where's the best place to get a pedicure? And people would post things and comment and people like to help. So you have to think about how to get engagement into your group and you have to have a plan around it. Like I said, anyone can start and grow it. It's just getting the people to talk and have have relationships with each other. And then for you to get leads out of the group is the main purpose of the group. It's great to have friends on Facebook and have thousands of them, but you want the leads and you want the transactions. So the plan, so it kind of depends on what the group is, but I definitely recommend community posts. So where are the best of whatever's? And if you have a really good VA, you can have them take all that. Like if you posted, where's the best pizza parlors? And people commented, or you posted, here's the 10, my 10 favorite pizza parlors. And then everyone's like, no, those aren't the best ones. Like here's my, you know, people have an opinion about everything. 
So you could take those lists and have your VA create like an infographic and you can put it in your guide section or you can use it for your relocation clients. Like I couldn't think for the life of me where all the breweries and wineries, because we have them in our area, that were kid friendly. Boy, did everyone come out of the woodwork and have their favorites. And I, my relocation clients are always like, this is the best list. I'm like, no, it took me so long to create it. <laughs> it, didn't. it took me like an hour on Facebook. Like all the moms gave me all their opinions. So community posts, you need to do an engagement, feed the algorithm posts. So you need to keep the engagement high. Don't post on Saturday and Sunday because I have rarely seen a group that's busy, except for like entrepreneur groups, but you wouldn't be starting that. To stick to Monday through Friday, events on Friday, everyone loves an event post, like what's going on in your neighborhood. I do do a small business on Saturday. It's just kind of a, a giveaway post, just a generic that goes in there every week because I don't want people doing their business every day. Um, it was getting a little bit hard. So this was like a good counterbalance to that. And then every once in a while, you're going to need to put real estate tips in there. So um, daylight savings time is coming up, right? It's like March 2nd or 3rd or something. It's coming up in March, right? Something. Yeah. Anyway, so one good post to post is daylight savings time is this weekend. Um, so often as a real estate agent, I go to home inspections and the smoke detectors are expired. We know they're expired because they're yellowed and or they don't have batteries in them. And with daylight savings time, it's a great time to check your smoke detectors and check your batteries because we don't want to have, you know, a house fire would be, you know, one thing I would never want to see is one of your houses to burn down. So, you know, to take this time for this weekend to check your batteries and check your smoke detectors. And also our fire station offers free smoke detectors if you can't afford one. And then I post a list of where they can go to um, take advantage of that program. But I put in there, I'm a real estate agent. I'm putting in a little tip and trick um, for them and I'm giving them a resource to help them. And then you're going to want to pull out leads out of your group. And one of the best ones to pull is name one thing that you want to change. If you could change one thing about your house today, what would it be? And then just wait. And there will be a whole bunch. And then you can go, okay, so, and then you need to dissect these people and go, okay, this one is having a baby. This one hates their yard. This one has a really horrible neighbor. And there's all these things. Well, someone who's having a baby is probably going to buy or sell a house, or they're probably going to sell their house very soon and buy a new one, right? So you need to get their information. If you don't already have it and you need to get their address, you start marketing to them and you need to come up with some marketing that you're going to send to them because that person in your funnel of thousands is probably down here. And they're having those conversations most likely within the next six months, right? Because every time anyone has a baby, like the house is too small. Or someone says they're getting married. That's a life event where people tend to pull the trigger on a transaction or they're retiring. Um, if someone get, mentions any of that in my group, then I start to kind of work those systems for marketing to them. When you say, okay, marketing to them, is that, are you, are you responding to that comment? Like in that thread, are you messaging them or are you sending them mailers? What does, what does that look like? I will comment, you know, like, congratulations. That's so exciting. You know, something you want to, you know, you want to build that relationship with them. And I don't come into like, oh, you want to buy a sell house? <laughs> like, no. So I will have a conversation with them. If they're having a baby, one thing that I like to do is, you know, congratulations. It's so exciting. You know, I remember when I had my kids. And only do this if this is true to you. Yeah, I'd love to send you a twenty-five dollar start or a twenty-five dollar uh, Target gift card to get you started on your gift registry, right? So they're gonna go, oh, yeah, I like this lady. She's gonna send me twenty-five bucks. So they're gonna give me your, their address, right? Because I'm not threatening to them, right? I'm not selling to them. I'm, I'm just, I care about you. Then I'm gonna dump that address. I'm gonna send them the gift card, of course. But I'm gonna and just a little card or whatever. And sometimes if someone says, oh, I'm having a baby in like March or you know whatever it is. I will put a, a thing in my CRM to say, hey, just send them like a $5 Starbucks or $10 Starbucks gift card in April because they're having a baby in March. I don't know when, but I'll just say in April, like, hey, I hope everything went well. I know I needed a ton of coffee to survive the first 30 days. Have a Starbucks coffee on me. It's five or 10 bucks out the door. But I'll also start sending them postcards and some email drip campaigns of like, have you outgrown your house? Are you thinking about, if I know that they're selling, if I know that they own the house, I'll do that. I'll look up the address and if they're renting or owning, and then obviously cater it, the drip systems to that. And there are some postcard drip systems that you can buy if you don't want to create them from like some of the bigger, like postcard companies actually will have them. And there are some local, I've seen some agencies, some local postcard companies, some of the agents I coach have like postcard companies in their like backyard marketing companies, and they'll sell them like a, like a whole series of postcards. What are your favorite postcard companies or top, top few? I send 
12 postcards out a year to my clients. And I just use Vistaprint. I don't, you know, and someone asked me, are they the best price? I don't know. It's like a dollar or some, maybe a little less than a dollar postcard. And I, I like Core Fact. I will sometimes send them around my listings because they have the QR code that you can get the CMA. And then I'm like, ooh, I know who wants to, who's thinking about selling their house. I like that. And I'm sure I could do it on Canva and create my, but I just like the funnels already set up for you. Um, who do you use? I don't send postcards. So, and I never really have, I guess back in the day I used to do, so I don't work with clients anymore, but back in the day I used to do the home anniversary and just like random little cards, but we had interns. And so the interns would sit there and write them and then like physically mail them out. So <laughs> not the most tech savvy back in the day. <laughs> I cannot, my 10 year old, I'm like, I hope you can get your handwriting a little bit better, but I like the day you can sit there and write my house anniversary and my birthday cards will be the best day of my life. Like I hate, and I know there are systems, that out, but I'm like, it's like, it's so much cheaper to do it on your own, but I need her to do them for me <laughs> one day. What else in this? So now we kind of have an idea about how to set it up an idea of what goes on within the page itself. What are we not thinking of that makes for a really optimized or impactful for your real estate business kind of Facebook group? It's really coming up with a plan around content and what are you going to do to identify the people? So there are companies out there. It was at a conference in Arizona in December and one of the agents, we were just talking at lunch and he bought a program. It was like five, it was like four, almost $5,000 a month. And it gives them predictive data marketing data from this company that says, oh, this person's going to Home Depot and they're buying paint and they're doing this. So the predictive data is saying, hey, this person's probably going to sell their home soon. And I said, so you're spending $5,000 a month on this. He's like, yeah, I'm getting you know, a few leads a month or whatever. I said, okay. But I was like, I'm kind of doing the same thing with my group and I can tell you what's going to happen, but I'm not spending $60,000 a year. So, you know, it's the same thing. You just have to think of it that way. So often I think when I audit Facebook groups or people, it's like, oh, this is just a fun, like, kumbaya, we're all friends. It's like, yes, that's great. But it's a business and it needs to be a pillar in your business. Just like at an open house, right? Like you're not just gonna let people like willy nilly come in and like, don't sign in. That's okay. And you're gonna have another agent sitting there collecting information, just like you would in your Facebook group, you have other agents. Like, no, no, no. It's a pillar in your business. It's an open house. They're coming to you and you need to nurture them and you need to provide value to them but you need to also realize these are leads and you need to get you need to figure out out of the 10,000 in your group who's going to buy or sell a house because you need the transactions you want the group leads to commissions wow <laughs> okay another question before heading to your golden nugget with going back to growing the page what you mentioned ads for would you say that that is the for I have an aversion to ads. Well, first of all, I don't even have a, a professional Facebook page. You know, it's like, I don't even have a way to make, to do Facebook ads. To grow the page, maybe for those that don't want to run an ad, how would you suggest growing growing your community? Is, is that possible? Or or is the way like the, you know, is a tried and true way just to do the ads to get to the process? I would only do ads if you've got an ad spend. If you don't have an ad spend and you're a new agent like I was, I didn't. I didn't start doing ads until I hit maybe a few thousand, but I wanted to do a little bit more of an influx. So I would say past clients, friends, family, people, you know, add them to the group and say, Hey, I really, you know, really trying to grow this group. Whoever can invite the most people this month gets an X gift card. Like I'm all about bribing people. Like it's okay. There's no shame. I'll give you $50 Starbucks gift card or whatever, Amazon or whatever. Um, and so, and you don't have to, you know, even if you give everyone something, that's fine. The people want to help you, right? And they want you to be successful in business. So they will add people to your group. Um, the other thing is you can go into, you have to be very careful because you get your hands off pretty fast is, and I don't allow it in my group because I know what's happening, but with some people don't, if, are there bigger groups in your area and you can go into there and you can see, like, for example, for me, if I see in my bigger area group, someone's asking questions about having a baby or they're looking for a new, you know, OBGYN or their whatever pediatrician. I go, Hey, I've got a mom's group. If you'd like the link to it, just let me know. We've got a lot of new moms in there. I think it might be beneficial to you. They're going to usually say yes. And I'll just put a link or I'll send it as a DM to them. But that's a great way to grow your group because they have a need. You have the answers. You have the group for that. It's your niche. So just invite them over. They'll do that. 
And then once you hit about 500, Facebook will start populating your group in front of people. Also, if the caveat to that is your group has to be active. So you need to keep it going and you need to keep posting it and having other people interact in your group as well. And at what point did you get a virtual assistant or, or, or any sort of leverage? Like you're, you're utilizing the Chrome extensions and AI. Do you, do you have people in place also for when you're too busy to answer the questions on Facebook or to, you know, start engagement? What does, what does that leverage look like? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Yeah. So I hired a VA last fall, not last. So fall of 22. Yeah. Just before Christmas of 2022. So for the last year, I've had an admin moderate or a VA moderate my group. And then we'll come up with a content plan. And then I will put in the content because you can schedule it out in Facebook groups for 60 days in advance. You can also use Hootsuite, but the problem is it'll post it as your business page. And what I hate is the business page doesn't go as far as like when it's your person, as a person posting. So I kind of stopped doing that. And then she just, she also does a lot of the hand slapping because when people don't do things that they're supposed to, I like you be the bad guy. So they look at you and get angry with you. (laughs) I don't like conflict either. So I make her do that. I still let everybody into my group because of the Chrome extension. But also what I find is I'm in a lot of real estate groups, right? And so when someone's wanting to join my group, I don't let other real estate agents in. Yes, I'm a mean person, but I just, I don't let a real estate agent sit at my open house. You're not sitting in the group. It's been, it's very plain and simple. But when we're letting people into the group, sometimes they do say I'm with XYZ real estate companies. Sometimes they don't in their profiles. But I'll go, oh, you're in like all these other Facebook groups like I am. Mm, You're a real estate agent or you're a lender. And so I just won't let them in. So I don't have her doing that because she's not in the same groups that I am and has the same friends. Like sometimes like, okay, wait, you and I have 300 of the same real estate friends. You're probably a real estate agent. (laughs) So Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Because a lot of people are very... The e- Facebook groups are what you make of it. You know, you're, it's really like your house, your rules, you know, like if you don't want anybody posting about I don't, the color purple, you know, you can just block them, delete them, like delete the posts. It, and it's really like, it's really just your rules. So yeah, why I, I agree with you there. And it's also Facebook's rules. So I just recently had someone who got their group shut down because they bought someone in their group violated Facebook's rules. So you also have to make sure you understand what Facebook's rules are and your members do. Because even it was just a picture of a kid with a, no clothes on or what diaper, I don't know, whatever. And they had a rash. And your know, mom's like, what's this rash? And it was like, you can't post pictures of children without clothes on because Facebook doesn't like that. And they shouldn't like that. And so you have to also know that you have to be very careful with Facebook because they will shut your group down in about two seconds. They see that. So yeah. Good point. Yes. Definitely become familiar with the platform that you're using before you try to utilize that platform to to get business. (laughs) Okay. I want to go to your golden nugget. What, what did you provide the audience with your golden nugget? Actually, I can give it away. So so I have a freebie. So obviously I have a Facebook groups course. I also do one-on-one coaching if you want, if you need a little more hand-holding for your Facebook group. But I also have a freebie. It's the top five posts that I use in my Facebook group. And I reuse them often, not every week, but like every six months or so. So you don't have to recreate the wheel all the time with your content. But it's my top five posts guaranteed to help get you sales in your Facebook group. If you go to groups2leads.com slash top five, the number five, you will get, they will send you an automatic um, email with all the the top five content posts that I post in my group. If you're stuck on the content, because I feel like people are always stuck on the content and how to extract the leads. And that's what my group is. That's what my course is about. Like, yes, I teach you how to set up the Facebook group and set up all the processes and the, and the, the backend like settings, but really getting the, the course really is about like finding the leads in your group by data mining your group, and by figuring out which of the people in your group are thinking about buying or selling. So you can stay in front of them. So that way, when they're having those conversations, you're the first person they think of. That's the main, I mean, that's the main thing with real estate, right? Everyone's having these conversations, just what agent is in front of that person's face at that moment gets the deal. And so I teach how to do that and how I do my nurture systems and all my backend stuff. 
Okay, perfect. And before we head to wrap up, Laura, is there anything that you want agents who are listening and considering starting a Facebook group to know? Remember your Facebook group, it's its own brand. Make sure it does complement your real estate company. So, you know, don't pick weird, you know, if your real estate company is green, don't pick purple. I mean, well, they just don't look very good, but maybe I'm picking on those colors. But realize that the group is not going to be real estate forward. That is not the purpose of the group. The purpose is to build community and to give back to your community and to be kind of like a local celebrity or your local mayor. That's really the focus of the group. Real estate sales will come and you will find people in your group that want to use you. But if you come and post your just listed, just sold every day and you're bombarding all these people, they're going to turn off your group. They may still be in your group, but they may turn it off because there's a setting to do that. And you just never know who did that. So, or who is or who isn't. So just come from a place of giving. I know we say that all in real estate, but it is so true. If you give, you will get back. So you just need to come start your group that way. Description, your banner, your name, everything needs to be about your community and giving back and the content versus I'm a real estate agent. Use me. And here's my just list and I just sold. No one cares. Love it. Okay. Wrap up question. Number one, what is your favorite app or tool other than Facebook? Oh, you know, I just downloaded one, except I didn't follow the advice today. Clearly there's a lady in in our area that does like your colors, you know, like they come and tell you what colors you should wear or not. And I can never get on her schedule. So there's an app called style DNA and it'll tell you what colors not to wear. I am, I think light summer. And so black and white are not my colors and black is not, and I'm kind of, I guess it's navyish black, but so I'm not supposed to wear that anymore when I do videos and things because it really doesn't complement my coloring. So that's my new favorite app, Style DNA. <laughs> $12, best 12 bucks I ever spent. I don't know if I want to spend that. I'm scared. I'd be like, it's a different color. <laughs> I think I'd be hurt. <laughs> okay. Well, Black is not your friend. I was like, what? <laughs> Black is I'm like, I'm like, I was like, half the closet has gone. <laughs> All out. <laughs> Okay. What events are you going to in 2024? Oh, I am actually going to one March. I just bought my plane tickets. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Who's, oh, she's going to shoot me. I don't know the name of it. Kristen Cantrell is doing an event in Florida for real estate. And I'm going to that. And it's, I, I don't know, like Panama. I don't remember. It's like Pensacola or something. But anyway, I'm super excited. <laughs> you know exactly what event you're going to. What is it? <laughs> that event. Are you going <laughs> No. Well, I mean, maybe, but who knows? <laughs> it might, maybe I'm Florida, like, maybe Panama. Love that oh you're God, excited I'm though. I know because I was looking at the airports. I'm like, you have a choice between Destin, Destin, Florida or Panama City or Pensacola. And I was like, Pensacola was the cheapest from Washington, D.C. And I'm excited because I need, well, I'm in D.C. So it's cold right now. And it's been snowing. So I'm like a little bit of beach. And I'm on the third, apparently I've got a room with a third floor and a balcony and I can see water. That's all I care about. Like I might even not even leave my room. <laughs> like there's something on the balcony. It's vacation. Away I don't from need the to kids. learn anything real estate related. Like who cares so much? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Laura, how can listeners, how can we and listeners help you in your business? If you're, you know, if you have a Facebook group, I we're launching next month, like a VIP experience. So if you want to just have me go into your group and just tell you what's wrong, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> and then that's fine. And then I've got a coaching program where I will do one-on-one coaching with you for the next, for three months. And we kind of dive into your group and see how I can help you get more leads from your group. Or if you'd like to kind of do it yourself, there's um, two different courses that we offer at groups to leads.com and you can um, sign up. There's a independent study course, which is uh, seven ninety seven, And then there's a VIP experience where you get some one-on-one Q and A with me for nineteen ninety seven. So if you want to use Facebook groups and make it as a pillar for this year in your business, and you want a free lead source, Facebook groups, a thousand percent. And like I said, anyone can start it and kind of grow it, but it's really getting those leads out of it and turning it into a consistently generation tool is, is what I, what I like to teach. That's where I, that's my passion. That's great. And that was groups to leads.com. What else is another way for people to get a hold of you and find out more information? Yeah, you can find I'm on Instagram. So it's Laura Griffin Realtor or on Facebook. It's Laura Griffin Coaching or Laura Griffin Realtor too. I mean, you can message me in either place and it has my phone number, my emails. Perfect. And you guys know, if you want to hang out with me and Allie, we are Allie, the agent and the Shelby show on the gram. As always hit us with feedback. We want to know how we can improve always. 
So, and then Laura, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Loved hanging out with you. And listeners, this one is for you. Be a bro and share this show. That's it? Yeah, I think that's it, right? And then and then it'll fast forward to you saying, okay. why Facebook groups? Yeah. Yeah. It'll, yeah, exactly. it'll do the hype music. And then... Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.